Joining us now is Bobby Chacon, an attorney and former FBI agent. Thank you so much for being here. So based on this video alone, I know you watched it. Do you think anyone will face charges here? No, I don't. I mean, if anyone should face charges, if the lawyer, if her lawyer has it right and he has publicly uh, put these out there, the receipts, she owned that bike in effect. She paid for it. It was hers. Um, she got on it, and then she was surrounded by this group of young black men demanding that it be turned over to them. So, uh, but I doubt Alan Bragg's office, the Manhattan District Attorney, will see it that way. Um, but you certainly could see the fact uh, you could look at it in a way that they were trying to take property away from her that rightfully belonged to her if those receipts that her lawyer has now made public are correct. So moving forward, what do you believe the implications will be of this interaction being so widely viewed and having so many people weigh in already? Yeah, unfortunately, I think that she she's paying the price already. She's getting threats. There are people sending her photos of her door saying, we're here, I'm here for you. I mean, she's, she's under a lot of duress. Now the hospital, her employer comes out with some absurd statement about almost implying that she was in the wrong um, and she could possibly lose her job, some, some are saying. That's ridiculous. She didn't do anything wrong. Um, but Ben Crump, the noted civil rights attorney who has a big following, has put this out as a racial incident. Um, and, and so she's paying a price now. I think that, you know, somebody like Ben Crump, if he can be found uh, liable for uh, intentional infliction of emotional distress on her, because now she's six months pregnant. She's, she's getting threats, you know, over, over a bike, over a stupid bike that she, by the way, paid for and was rightfully the, uh, the possessor of. So I think that, you know, I think that there are really bad implications to this labeling her a racist, uh, you know, unjustifiably. You know, she could lose her job. She's already under, under duress, um, you know, being pregnant and now having all this stress. Um, she's paying a price, uh, an unfair price. Well, we'll see how it plays out. Um, we'd also like to get your take on another case. We have new information on the Utah mother accused of killing her husband, Corey Richens. She was supposed to be in court today. The hearing was postponed after new allegations came to light. Richens is accused of poisoning her husband last year with a fentanyl-laced cocktail. Prosecutors now say between 2015 and 2017, she took out four life insurance policies on her husband without him knowing it. The total payout on those policies was nearly $2 million. Uh, so what kind of weight do these facts have in court? Was money a possible motive? Do you think that will be the narrative here? Yeah, Kelly, I, I absolutely do because you know juries always want to know the why and want to know you know you know and financial motive is a very common one uh, for murder. Um, and she actually they had uh, the the husband had a life insurance policy with his business partner with naming each of them the beneficiary of the other so the business would survive if one of them died. And then she tried to have that policy uh, moved to her as the beneficiary. They caught up to it and they changed it back. So she's, this is a pattern of behavior on her, trying to set up a situation where she benefits financially from her husband's death, and then he dies, you know, seemingly at her hands. So I think this is all very important, going to the financial motive she had in his death. All right. And switching gears one last time, we wanted to ask you about the update in the latest in the fatal rush shooting. Attorneys for the film's armorer want the involuntary manslaughter charges against her dropped. They say prosecutors mishandled this case from the very beginning. So Hannah Gutierrez was in charge of the gun that went off on set, killing cinematographer. And last month, prosecutors dropped involuntary manslaughter charges against Alec Baldwin, as you know, who was holding the gun when it did, in fact, go off. So we have about 40 seconds seconds left. Do you think these charges will ultimately be dropped? Well, I think they should. Um, if they were dropped against uh, the others, uh, well, they were dropped against Alec Baldwin, and then the first uh, assistant director had a misdemeanor. He was allowed to plead to a misdemeanor. So they're going to have a good argument as why she's being singled out when three people held that gun, one pointed it and fired it. So why is the one person only being held responsible, at least for a felony, responsible? So I think she'll have a good argument if it does go to trial. I don't think it should. If, if Alec Baldwin is not going to be held criminally responsible, then I don't think she should either. Um, but she has a good argument if they go to trial on being made an example of in this case. And it might be compelling to a jury. All right. We'll wait and see how it plays out. Bobby Chacon, thank you as always.